Hi, I'm Stephen Feinberg, Executive Director of the Rhode Island Film and Television Office. Our guest tonight is an extraordinary art director named Carl Sprague. He's worked on films from Wes Anderson's Moonrise Kingdom to Woody Allen's Irrational Man. Carl, thank you so much for being oh, here. Thank you for having me. It's great. So let me ask you something. Um, I know you have a very long history of working with Wes Anderson. How did that start? Working with him is, you know, I mean, Royal Ten Bums is already, you know, like his third big feature, and and uh, and uh, you know, but but he well, this is that was before he had done animation like Fantastic Mr. Fox, and right. you know, we had uh, uh, our sort of our principal, uh, you know, if you will, sort of art department, you know, s concept sketches, ideas, you know, were, I mean, there were some little storyboards that Wes did himself, yep. and as he, I think he's always done, but, you know, it wasn't comprehensive, wasn't the whole film all mapped out, um, uh, uh, he certainly had a lot of ideas um, about what he wanted, but, um, you know, we were working um, principally from, you know, a bunch of sketches that uh, uh, Wes's brother, Eric Anderson, right. had done, uh, he's a wonderfully gifted, very you know, quirky, interesting illustrator, and and so from there we started started developing. You know, well, what is it? And you know, and all that's Wes. You know, but uh, uh, that movie was was striking because uh, you know I make a set list generally, you know, always when 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 I'm starting a design project like that, and uh, and uh, usually you know you're. Typical film set list is anywhere from like you know forty to sixty sets. Yeah. You know, interior the diner, interior kids' bedroom, exterior baseball field. You know that kind of thing. Um, Royal Tenenbaums, we had uh, I think there were um, two hundred sets on, wow. <laughs> on our set list. And we just we just chewed through scenery. We were shooting you know um, um, you know four or five different sets a day, you know, something just for, you know, an hour or two, but, you know. And are you, um, so the design of that, the Royal Tannenbaums, is that something you're, you're, you're basing it on those, his brother's illustrations? And yeah, then, no, there were some very specific things. I mean, you know, the uh, painting the walls of the house pink, it was put with, you know, I mean, painting the radiators gold. A lot of that movie was driven we were all locations. We hardly built any scenery. So um, all of it. So we, but every location we did something big to. We would come in and do a big paint job, or we might, you know, build some pieces, or add a window here, or certainly signs, graphics, you know, vehicles, uh, all kinds of things to, you know, we changed out all um, the uh, city street signs. Yeah. Uh, if you remember, they say <laughs> things like, you know, 675th Avenue. And, right. And, right. Right. Uh, so, uh, so there was, there was, it was a, it was a really busy project and we were, you know, it was the first movie I'd worked on, even though I'd been working in New York for, you know, since like Age of Innocence, um, or before on PA jobs and stuff, but it was the first movie I worked on where we were really, like we were in every borough, we were in Staten Island, we were in the Bronx, we were in Queens, we were in Yonkers, right. we, you know, we, I don't think we went to New Jersey, but, uh, right. but, um. So it was a lot of driving around, a lot of running around and keeping track of and how of How has the relationship uh, evolved working with Wes? Oh, well, Wes, so, you know, I mean, again, I've, I've worked with different designers, and, you know, my, I have not designed a movie for Wes, but I've, I, I don't know, I've, I've, I've had a lot of to do right. with, um, you know, four of his projects now, so it begins to add up. Um, so we're talking, like, uh, the Moonrise King, are we talking Royal Tannenbaums, Tannenbaums Moonrise yeah. Kingdom, uh, and uh, uh, Grand, Budapest, Grand Budapest, and now Isle of Dogs. Isle of Dogs. And very different kinds of projects. Um, a lot of what I've done for him lately and for Adam has been to, like, sort of take, you know, some something which is already established, you know, a little storyboard, you know, or just a frame or something like that, and then, you know, build it up. Like, so, you know, we, we the Grand Budapest, we had the... Hotel. You know, we had the hotel, but you know, the drawing that I had of the hotel was like that big, you know, <laughs> and done with a big pen or something, and and uh, so you know, I made it into a 
big drawing, and then uh, broke that, and everyone said, oh, this looks great, you know, and then um, spent about, I don't know, spent quite a lot of time breaking it down so that the model builders would have something in scale that they could really refer to, you know, so that they weren't having to make it up. Right. Uh, and I did a lot of that for, um, for Isle of Dogs. There's so much architecture. I spent nine months working on just drawings for model makers out in, in England. I never, I never left the office in New York. <laughs> right, but, right. You know, and, and would send you know stuff to, to Wes and Adam every single day, and he'd come back with you know very specific notes, and then you know I mean anyway it was. It looks uh, fantastic. I think it's going to be great. Yeah. Well, I, I want to thank you very yeah. much for coming on the show, sure. and uh, we look forward to having more conversations with you about your other productions. Great, thank you. Now, you worked on two films with um, Maya Forbes and Wally Wolodarski. Yeah. One was Infinitely Polar Beer, starring Mark Ruffalo and Zoe Saldana. No. And the other was recently The Poker King with Jack Black. Yeah. Now, when you're working with them, how does, how do, what's the process of working with them? Well, I'm the designer in that case. So, you know, I'm, I, there's a little bit of a more direct layer of communication than, you know, if I'm going to, like, you know, someone like David Wasco and sort of, you know, he's taking it to the director. Right. Uh, uh, Maya and Wally are just really delightful to work with. Um, the, uh, you know, in both cases, they're kind of creating these sort of funny worlds. Um, uh, uh, I mean, the world of the Poker King is just this kind of surreal riff, and and we had a lot of reference from the from the documentary, documentary that it was right. based on, and and just kind of kind of creating that. And I you know I don't know if we ever got you know enough when you're talking polka, to cha po Polish tchotchkes in the in the in the tchotchke store, <laughs> right. but I don't think that was physically possible. When, we really tried hard. When you're yeah. talking to the directors, um, are you talking like color palette? Are oh, you absolutely. Talking? So yeah. so tell us like. For the right. audience members, like what what are you discussing? Like, well, I mean, I would say you know, uh, with Poker King, I mean, it, it it would be again sort of pretentious probably to like make too much of a sandwich out of that movie, but because right. it was really a fairly straight ahead comedy, but uh, there were sort of a whole world of like red, white, and blue things going on, and then some sort of like sort of sickening greens and stuff that. Uh, uh, and I, uh, you know, certainly had few conversations about those things with Maya and Wally and with the designer, so when the costume designer. So when you're, talking to, when you're talking to them about, let's say, the Poker King, which yeah. is really this guy who wanted to make it in America mm -hmm. and then suddenly got corrupted. So when you're saying red, white, and blue, so that theme of trying to make it in America, those colors are coming in. And then, Absolutely. Right. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's a subtext. It may be just, it may, it, you know, it's, it's, it's just might just be for me. But, uh, um, but it's it's there. And you know, and then with with infinitely polar bear, that was uh, sort of a more delicate thing in that, you know, we were reconstructing Maya's childhood. Right. Which is an interesting place because I had spent, you know, we're she's a little younger than I am, but I'd spent a lot of time in Cambridge in the 1970s, and you know. And so I kind of had an idea of what that looked like and, you know, how you, you know, if they could afford it, which they probably couldn't, you know, right. they would go to the design research store and buy those <laughs> Mary Macko pillows. Um, but uh, we um, uh, didn't have much to go on. Uh, and, you know, we ended up uh, finding it just like fantastically easy and positive to be in Providence, because there were things that if we had been in Boston or let alone in Cambridge, we'd just have been like pulling teeth, and right. and it was just as easy as falling off a log to be in this. I mean, I almost the locations were almost all within walking distance. Yes, you know there were neighborhoods over on the on the east side that were just you know you know perfect period flashbacks. Uh, there were you know gorgeous places over on you know uh, uh, up on Benefit Street that you know were. You know, I, uh, you know, we were looking for Beacon Hill, and I think we did better. You yep. know, so uh, uh, it, and fe it feels authentic. The movie it really, feels yeah. Authentic. And 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 the nicest thing that happened, and you know, again, sort of like sort of teasing out with with Maya, like sort of picking her brain, like what was this like? What do you remember from this? What's sort of the palette? You know, it was all this kind of like warm brownie, little bit of a kind of a faded old photograph 
thing, how much that came across. A wonderful uh, DP there, Bobby Bukowski, but uh, uh, and a mo another movie about a hoarder, right. too much stuff, right. um, in a very small apartment, <laughs> right. with one door. Right, right. <laughs> that was rough. Um, but uh, uh, you know, the nicest thing that happened was Maya's mom came to the set one day, mm -hmm. and I had asked. If you know, if she had any photos, if anyone had ever taken a photo of the apartment, because we had been, we were on such a tight schedule, we really didn't have time to do a whole lot of research or make it, you know, kind of, you know, we, we know what we're doing, we're hoping we're on the right track, and my mom, mom stuff, and maybe some of Maya's family stuff, and we put it all together. Anyway, her mom pulls out this old Polaroid, and it's like, yeah, this wow. looks, you know, it's, it's like we, you know, we're you, both, you were, we, we, we kind of got, got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Um, any advice you have for any um, young filmmakers, uh, wannabe production designers, art directors, anything you want to share? Uh, oh, uh, well, I was, I was, I was told that you must learn how to draw. Um, I work for a lot of people who, you know. Uh, uh, can draw, some who can't, some who, you know, can but don't, you know. Um, uh, um, it's been really incredibly valuable to, uh, to make pictures of what, you know, on any level, whether it's a, you know, whether it's a technical construction drawing for, you know, specking out the moldings or, or whether it's some like little blurry little watercolor uh, or, you know, a doodle that you snap with your iPhone. Um, uh, it, the idea that a picture is worth a thousand words is, is completely true and sometimes it's worth a lot more. Yeah. Um, so, so I think that, uh, you know, drawing that sort of thing, exposing yourself to as much, uh, you know, of the world and places and literature and, you know, I mean, a lot of, I have some jobs which is just locations. Some jobs which are, you know, just about like, you know, period details, you know, 12 years of slave. We're digging around, there's no photographs. It's the 1830s, right, right. there's nothing to look at. There's like, you know, you're looking at steel engravings, right, you know, right. and, and trying to sort of suss out like, well, what did the world look like? I mean, you can sort of dial forward and maybe imagine, well, you know, here's a nice daguerreotype taken like 30 years later, but it's, it's you know, things change. You need to figure out how to immerse yourself into that. Yeah. So, uh, so, but that's the joy of the whole business. And then also the other thing is get a job. And you know, and 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 make friends. And make friends. And and you know, and if you don't think you can do that job, you'll just have to learn while you're doing it. Right. So, uh, I've done, and work begets work, right? I've done a lot of that. Yeah. I hope it does soon. Uh, <laughs> Well, you, I, I honestly, yeah. I, I think your work will stand, it stands the test of time. Well, it's certainly I, accumulating like the snow. Right. So, no, yeah. no, and, and, right. and, um, and it is, um, it's art. What you do thank is you. art. Well, and I want to thank you on behalf right. of cinema goers yeah. around the world. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming to no, Double Feature. I really appreciate it.